when you have friends like Bit Plum, Danny Meatball, Mr. Snow, who are registered as jerk faces because they have PVS 14s, you got to do what you can do to try to get yourself able to see at night as well. Hey there makers, welcome back to Middle to Made. The channel is all about DIY firearms and 3D printing. No, no, <laughs> not actually casting shade at those guys. Uh, Mr. Snow did uh, indeed allow me to try out his very fancy, awesome white phosphor uh, PVS 14s. And ever since that day, I've been like, okay, I need to get some night capabilities. I feel like night vision is one of those things where it looks cool, it's in games, it's in movies, whatever. But until you actually see it with your own two eyes, or four in my case, you don't actually get it. Like, it's different, and it's way the fuck cooler in person. Now the route that I went is a little bit more DIY, but not DIY to the point where I think you guys can replicate this. So, here's kind of the breakdown. These things are using a PVS-5 tube, intensifier tube. It's an analog tube, it's not something you can just buy off Amazon. Uh, they're surplus. I think the warranty on this one expired in 1990, so it's old. It was supposed to be DOA as well. It shouldn't be working. The pair will use three volts. I put three volts to just this one and the image was very dark. I believe that's why it was DOA. And then I got a new, I got CR123A batteries and I got six volts through there to that and I could finally actually see shapes. Uh, and once I started focusing the front lens, which is the objective lens, I could actually start to make out what objects were. So I'm like, oh, well shit, maybe I can actually get these to work. I just have to overvolt the living shit out of them to get it to work. So I believe this one tube is supposed to take 1.5 volts. And right now I'm putting 7.3 through it. It's a little, a little sketchy. So this whole unit is using some DIY electronics a PVS-5 intensifier tube, and a PVS-5 objective lens. I could not get an ocular lens, the one that goes towards your eyes, uh, for an affordable cost. So my route was actually suggested by Danny Meatball, get a double convex uh, 50 millimeter lens, and if you get it appropriately distanced, you can enlarge the very small hole that uh, the back of the intensifier tube has that produces an image and enlarge it to actually see better with your eyes. The issue, or at least that I'm running into, is when you're using something like this, the distance for it to actually be able to see is quite a bit, uh, quite a bit more than I'd like. I wanna have this like half the distance, but I can't focus that close with my eye, so it doesn't quite make sense. Let's show you some of the examples on how this thing actually works in the dark, outside, most of them down here, and take it apart so you can see kind of the really janky electronics I did just to get this thing to run. All right, let's hop into it. So what you're gonna see here is on the left side what I basically can kind of see with the camera and the PVS-5 version. You can really see the highlights kind of going overblown but everything else looks pretty good. Here's a bathroom that's been renovated. There's a light coming in from the top from outdoors and that's getting blown out, but everything else looks pretty good, especially in the shelving. And here, it's basically pitch black to my eye, but you can see the water heater in the furnace with the PVS-5. Now, this was really bright and really dark all in one scene, so this is kind of a bad scenario uh, for the PVS-5, but you can kind of see the limits. Overblown in the middle, everything else looks good. Now we head outside. Uh, that fence was pretty much invisible to my eyes. I can just make out a little bit in the center. Everything else was pretty much black that night. The PVS-5, I can actually see a little bit. This would greatly 
uh, benefit from an illuminator though. The stars were visible by eye and even more visible with the PVS5, but it really doesn't stand up to a Gen 3 intensifier tube. This bump helmet is from Hardhead Veterans. It's in Multicam, and it's probably the most comfortable bump that I've used yet. I have the counterweight on the back and a ripoff Amazon clone of the Wilcox G24 mount. All right, so let's get into the disassembly. So after you pop it off of the helmet and mount, you take off the screw. The screw was going to be a good idea, but it ended up causing more issues in the long run. This particular one, I should have made backwards because unscrewing it, it actually has to go over the power button. So you turn on and off the device a few times just by removing the screw. So I need to flip that around. Inside, because I didn't have a perfect idea of how I want everything laid out, nothing's hot glued in, but you can see a nine volt battery and this uh, power regulator. Basically, it takes anything from a certain voltage range and steps it down to whatever you've set. I have it going down from nine volt to, it was set to 7.3. As the battery dies, the voltage will go down, so 7.2. Now, this screw is supposed to aid in keeping it where your eye is. So after you get the height right, you can make, move it left and right and then clamp or use the screw as a clamp. Works pretty good, actually. Um, the, lay, the lines from the layers in the FDM print really add enough friction to kind of help with that. For a non-permanent setup, uh, this actually wasn't as bad as I was imagining. It is pretty janky, uh, admittedly, but it's not as bad as I was thinking it was going to be. First time I got to use soldering in a project in the last couple of years, so that was fun. I used to solder almost every day, so getting a, a little bit more on that skill was kind of fun. Now, the housing to the intensifier tube and the lens, or lenses, is a little bit interesting. I have four pieces that kind of uh, jigsaw together, and one of them is over half of the circle, so it actually will clip the circle, circular parts into it, so the lens and the bodies of like the, the housings and stuff will actually click into half of this, and the other half just sits on top and is secured by those screws. And there's that double convex lens that I was talking about. I do have enough space behind, or around the lens, I should say, for a printed gasket. So if I ever feel like I need to uh, beef this thing up a little bit more and make it actually like more water resistant, there is that for an option. Apologize for doing this all off screen. Kind of hard to see what you're uh, looking at when you're trying to hide away from uh, a light. There you are. So there are three things that if I were to do this and publish it for you guys, that I'd wanna have fixed. First, the layer orientation on this print causes it to separate. You can see here, pulling the supports off caused it to snap a little bit right there. Luckily, I used an interface material, so it wasn't too bad, but uh, I'm pretty confident that if you had normal supports and didn't have a support material, that that would break off. The second, when it's all together, there's a little bit of a gap, so water could get through the edges of those seams, and you could probably fill that all in with hot glue, but I didn't want to. The last thing, so I thought it would be smart to use a nut and have the lid attach through and screw in through this nut to provide leverage onto one of these parts. Basically it would screw into it and that would be a, another way for it to kind of turn and uh, be approximately in the right position in front of your eye and you could secure it to that location. Well, in doing so, I got another layer separation. 
so either I need to fix the printing quality itself or PLA plus isn't strong enough for this type of leverage. There is a lot of pressure on there and these walls aren't super thick, um, but there, I thought they would be thick enough. So I'd have to find a different way to secure that in order to make sure that it would sit in front of your eye at uh, the right place. I'm really interested in night capable devices. I know that there's digital ones out there like the PVS 69 and there's uh, a couple other projects going on, but I wanna start getting into some other things that I could put underneath the digital carrots line. So I'll probably have some more projects coming out, ones that are meant for you guys to actually print, not kind of like this guy here. With that said, there's already a couple things in the works with some very talented people, so I really can't wait to show you guys what is coming up next. As usual, if you have any questions, please leave it down in the comments. I try to respond to every comment and every message, so you'll probably get a response if you actually do have a question. And stay tuned, I have a lot more coming up. Goonbeam sent me some of their flashlights, and uh, they're not trash. So stay tuned for a comparison on that, and uh, with that, I'm out. Can't stop the signal.